This is Lay with Crash Test Hobby showing you how to build the Reaper XL. This also will help you understand how to build the regular Reaper and Titan and other variations of similar planes. To start with, you need to clean the foam. You can do this by rubbing the two pieces of foam together, or you can use a razor and shave the fibers off, or even take your fingernail and pick a few of the stubborn fibers off. When you lay out the spars, you'll see for a standard Reaper and Titan, the spars are in an A-frame like this. When we add an extension on either plane, you now have to put a cross piece across the front, but the rest of the A-frame is intact. We're now going to glue the cores together. We're going to do this by using a hot glue gun with a low temperature glue stick. I like this because it's fast. I can build faster this way than any other way I know. The only time you have to worry about this is when the temperature outside is going to be very hot. The spars are installed on both the top and the bottom of the wing. Front spars are back an inch and a half. The back center spars are on the CG for each individual plane. I like to use a soldering iron to cut the depth for the spars. If you notice, I have a wheel collar and I've ground the tip of the soldering iron flat. And once it's heated up, I just slide it along a metal flat, uh, straight edge and cut a trench for this spar. Here's the one across the front. It is also an inch and a half back. And here's the one for the right wing. Now this is done on both the top and the bottom of the plane. The sp top spars should be directly over the bottom spars. Now I'm measuring back to the center of gravity from the leading edge of the plane. I can test and make sure that line is straight by measuring on the outside of the wing. And then I take my soldering iron and I go along my metal straight edge and cut this slot for the spar. In order to make the joints where the spars come together the strongest, I bend the wires that are included in the kit at an angle so they sit in the trenches to make it so that they can sit deep enough that they don't hold the spar up above the surface of the wing. I use a soldering iron and cut just a little extra depth at those places. Filling the slot with hot glue, I then insert the spar and as you saw, I sand the spar just enough to get the shine off it, but I press the spar down in. Don't use too much glue. This is where you can add a lot of weight. But we'll go back and actually touch the glue up in a few minutes to make sure we've got a good bond. You'll notice it goes right over the wire uh, angles that are at the corners. And those wire angles become as strong as the rods and hold the plane together. One of the many things we do to make these combat worthy. I use a pair of wire cutters and trim the rod to length. Here's how I add a glue stick to the glue gun, putting glue across the uh, bottom spar slot. I then insert the spar and hold it in place. I'm a champion at burning my fingers while I do this. Now I'm adding a little extra glue just to fill the slot in and a straight edge will smooth it out but don't add too much weight. If you get bulging or lumps anywhere, you can take a soldering iron and just smooth out the glue, but make sure you don't melt the foam around it. I use wire cutters and cut off the ends of the spars that are poking out. Now we're working on the bottom of the, on the top of the plane now. The reason we do the bottom first is because the airfoil isn't so affected uh, and on the bottom, it, there's more shape on the top of the plane. In this particular case, the front spars are pretty much the same, but the center spar, I've pinned down both ends and I'm holding the spar down into its slot while it cools. Now I'm installing the Formica plate. As you can see, I center it, put glue on the uh, back of the wing and glue the plate down into position. We have not found any uh, material lighter and tougher than these Formica plates. Now you'll notice in this particular case, I'm showing the installation of a larger plate. In the future, this will be added to the kit just to tie it into the spars a little bit better. Our initial planes did not have this, but this will be a modification that will be appearing in the future. Now using this razor blade, I go around the entire perimeter of the plane and cut a slit into the edge of the wing that is about uh, 
three eighths of an inch deep to a half inch deep. In this, I'm going to put a shock cord. The purpose of the shock cord is to hold the plane together like a unibody. When you hit something, a plane wants to split between the elevons through the middle of the wing going further, forward. We have found that by putting the shock cord in, that this is, greatly reduces any damage that the plane has in a forward impact. After applying baking soda to the uh, shock cord, I then st stretch it tight and using a small Phillips screwdriver go around the perimeter of the plane and push the shock cord down into the slit that I just got with the razor blade. Now make sure that as you go along the trailing edge you do not warp the wing. Uh, if you stretch it too tight along the back of the wing you can actually cause it problems when you go to do uh, your elevons later. I go deep across the back so that the prop can't uh, cut the shock cord and you can go back around with the screwdriver a couple of times if you want to make sure it's down at the bottom of the slot. When I get to the front I tie the strings together and make sure that they're all the right tension and trim them off for length. I use thin CA glue to glue the shock cord in place. This creates a lot of fumes and I actually recommend that you go outside and do it if you do not have a ventilation system. It will make your eyes water and uh, it's obviously not a safe practice, especially with the baking soda which accelerates the glue. But glue around the entire perimeter and uh, then set your plane somewhere where if glue seeps through the foam that you won't have any difficulty of the plane gluing itself to your countertop. Using a razor blade, trim your elevons to length. Notice how I fit the angles so that they're straight. Make sure you make a right and a left elevon. May I repeat that? Make sure you make a right and a left elevon. Your hinge line will be along the top pointed edge of the elevon. Uh, I frequently see people make two of one side or else make them upside down. So uh, where you're doing them together like this, it's easier to not get confused. We are now going to put the extreme tape on the plane. Extreme tape goes over every spar and plus in other areas to strengthen the basic body of the plane. I put one strip across the main spar and this is on the top of the plane. One across the front spar and in the case of the top of the plane like this I'm putting a piece of tape right behind it. I don't fill that gap with tape just because it adds so much weight and also that's where all the radio is going to be installed in a few minutes. This is the bottom of the plane. I stretch the extreme tape along this bar. And then starting from there, I work my way forward with just a very slight overlap and work myself to the front of the plane. Now, uh, the reason we put tape along the bottom is it gets a lot more abuse because the plane will be landing on this part of the plane. Also, all of your battery and electronic parts will be supported by this tape so that they don't get damaged in the case of a collision. I now put a tape along the leading edge and back barely over the spar on the uh, bottom of the plane. I'll do it along the front and I'll also put tape on the top so that it wraps around the leading edge and there's almost an overlap and double layer of tape on those leading edges where the plane will take the most abuse. Notice how I split the tape and wrap it from, up from the bottom and down from the top in order to reinforce the angles. Thank you for watching. At the end of this video you will see uh, the main spar distances from the leading edge of the wing and uh, we appreciate you watching. There are other videos showing how to laminate and install radios.